Hey, what's up, guys? I'm unemployed and extremely fucking bored. So I figured I'd do a review on the Sega Game Gear. I'm a big Sega fan. And being born in 1990, that's been a little bit challenging and a little bit depressing. I mean, it's... I'm lucky I even, let me put it this way, I've had to order most of all my Sega systems online or from someone, you know, at work because I grew up in a very small rural area of America and, well, the Sega Dreamcast was the only Sega system I've ever, you know, I ever experienced. I never, I ever saw in the store. Because I had never seen a Sega Saturn in Walmart. Never saw, like, a Game Gear. I never... Well, I was a little bit too young, probably, to see a lot of the Genesis games. So the Sega Game Gear was Sega's answer to the Nintendo Game Boy, obviously, launched in 1989. This was launched in 1990. Um, I'm very impressed with the Game Gear, I'd have to say. This is the first, I got mine working a few months ago. I sent it away on eBay to get it fixed from some guy. Because I had bought, bought it years ago on eBay. And of course the capacitors were blown. That's pretty much what you're going to have to deal with buying a Game Gear in, you know, 2023. They just have bad com capacitors in them. <clears throat> but I'm very impressed with the system, I'd have to say. Let me show you the games I got. Mine came with this, um, it's like an off-brand case. Unfortunately, it doesn't say Sega, but it was just like an off-brand at the time Game Gear case, I guess. But I got, this is the best-selling game for the system, Sonic 2. It's basically like, it's basically like a, it's like, I don't even know how to describe it because I've never played the Master System version, but it's like, a, it's basically the same game, but a little bit reworked. And this one is probably one of the most brutal one of the most brutal um, games I've ever played in my life, actually. And I can beat Ninja Gaiden 1 and 2 on NES, no problem at all. The first boss is basically unbeatable and has made me throw the goddamn game across the room a couple times. And then if you manage to beat that or put the level select code in, the next in the next level after the first boss... Um, you, like, use some hand glider, and the controls are god-awful, unintuitive shit, where you just fall right straight into the hole. And that's what, you know, Sega fans had to deal with in the early 90s. Just, you know, Mar Nintendo kids had, you know, Super Mario Land, I guess probably one and two, well, probably two wasn't even out by this time, but one at least was, you know, very playable, very fun, didn't have the graphics this did, but I would much prefer to play Super Mario Land 1 on, or fucking, whatever the fuck it's called, Mario, whatever the fuck it is. Okay, Ren and Stimpy, Quest for the Shaven Yak, I highly recommend. This was a blast. Just great 8-bit platformer. It's basically like a port of the Master System game again. But it's very good. Jump around. <clears throat> it's just like a simple platformer. You throw stuff around. Get a couple different power-ups. Graphics are nice. Bosses are a little bit annoying, but... Hey, great game. Great music. 
great from the show. I mean, it's some cool little funny cutscenes. Highly recommended. X-Men for Game Gear. This is a cool action game. You get to use a bunch of different X-Men, but I just stuck with Cyclops the whole time because he has like some shooting move. Pew, pew. And um, yeah, a little bit, a lot of exploration, a little bit of action, punch, punch, kick, kick, a little bit of shoot, shoot. You can fly with some characters. There's a bunch of annoying bosses to overcome once you make it past the labyrinth-like levels. I mean, I'm making it sound not that fun, but what? it's an 8-bit handheld game from like 91 or something. I mean, honestly, very fun, very playable. Impressed with my game gear on this one. This was one of the first games I bought for it, and let's start her up. Game Gear reliability right there. Smash her in. Works. Every time. Says Sega. Sega! And awesome music in this game. I can't stop dancing to it. I can't stop. You find a, um, tell me a new game that has like a track that just makes you want to dance like an 8-bit game. There's just nothing. 8-bit game tracks make me want to get up and dance and be a complete goofball. Plain and simple. So, in conclusion, do I recommend the Sega Game Gear? Yes! If you're a, you know, 30, 40 something year old man that can't stop buying retro video game systems and can't get enough of 8 bit and 16 bit systems, get out of here. Then, by all means, get a Game Gear. If you have soldering skills, even better, because you're probably going to have to fix a few capacitors to get this thing working correctly. Um, but yeah, I highly recommend the Game Gear. I mean, I would say, like, if I was a kid, I would definitely want this over the Game Boy. <laughs> I seriously would, just... Because, like, I was born in 90, but... Get! I'm... I remember the plight of, you know, the Game Boy screen. I rem I used to have to play Game Boy games on the bus, on the school bus. No light. You know, six something in the morning. Couldn't see a damn thing on it. I don't even know why I was playing it, but... This thing, you could actually probably play on a bus and actually beat the game. <laughs> but yeah, go Sega. Sega rocks, dude. Sega definitely deserved a lot better, I'll say that, in conclusion.